Talmadge is a special place. Um, it's a 200-year-old city full of uh, strong families and as well as strong industry. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a community that values faith and service and education. So not only a great place to live, we have awesome recreation opportunities for families. It's also a great place to work. It's full, home to manufacturers, retailers like Summit Racing, contractors, healthcare, banking. So it's a great community that's very supportive of Talmadge City Schools. Talmadge is a, a mixed community, elderly, younger. Uh, they support the school system. They support the students. It's a truly a community. I've lived in this community for uh, over 50 years now, and uh, I, I've seen it grow from a farming community to what it is today, and they, they've, uh, they've molded it to, to a really good place to live. Talmadge's vision uh, started when they brought in uh, a consultant where we all talked about what it was we wanted out of our students and what we wanted our students to get out of the Talmadge experience as well. So when we all came together and said, this is what education should be, we decided we needed to take the steps to get there. And what I've seen a lot is uh, focusing on the whole student. So focusing on how to make sure the student is the portrait of a graduate here at the high school and getting them ready for those key characteristic traits uh, at the elementary and middle school. When I was introduced to authentic learning five years ago, um, for me, there was an automatic click because I saw things that I was already doing in my classroom. And um, it helped me to look at ways that I could improve that for my students. Um, I've always focused on a very student-driven classroom. And so working and learning more about authentic learning over the last five years has really enabled me to grow what I was already doing. I think the shared vision of the district has really moved from test scores to those what we call soft skills collaboration, problem solving, communication. And I think with those things, um, students are able to show more than just academic achievement. They're able to do more than what we have ever seen before. And I think it's really gonna create when they leave us, um, human beings that are problem solvers and that are ready to go out into the world and tackle whatever it is that they are going after. Our goal is to prepare students for the next step. So district-wide, you know, we're looking to get uh, students employed, to get them enlisted or enrolled uh, somewhere when they're finished now. To me, when we talk about authentic learning, that vision fits right into that. Um, as this is my 23rd year in education, the question from students is always, where does this apply or how am I going to use this in life? And I think with the authentic learning vision that our district has, um, we're, we're trying to answer that question at all levels. The shared vision of Talmadge City Schools is to really transform education and what that looks like for our students. And that is moving beyond tests and textbooks and moving into more real world connectedness to our community and connectedness to the standards. So we developed a portrait of a graduate and uh, there's a lot of habits and skills that the kids are supposed to develop like perseverance and problem solving and collaboration. And so for me, authentic learning really lends a hand to that process. The kids go through experiences that they have to persevere and, and they have to do all these things that are going to help them in their futures and in their life to help them go whatever path they would like to go. Um, for me, I enjoy it because it helps me get to know my kids more at a different level than just what they know and how they fit the standards. Um, I, I get to know them. I get to explore different ideas with them and really see them grow. So it brings me a lot of joy. We started our journey with really the development of our portrait of a graduate and our directional system, which are two pieces that have really been operationalized through our process um, and through our journey. So in establishing kind of our North Star and what we value and what we want our student experience to look like, those really have driven all of the decisions that we've made up to this point, including uh, a part of our hiring process, including um, systemic decisions that we are able to make at the district level so that those are really operationalized and driving everything that we do. And we 
are encouraging our staff to take little steps toward that shared vision, toward that directional system and what we want the student experience to look like. The portrait of a graduate has really helped us kind of focus in on what we believe as a district. I think as teachers, we know that those soft skills are some of the most important things that our kids can have. Um, we know that problem solving is a huge piece of just being a lifelong learner. We know that collaboration and empathy in today's world is what is going to help people be successful, help people stand apart from the crowd. And I think that our portrait of a graduate um, with what intrinsically our teachers already knew and already do, um, supported with the district and the administration is really moving in a good direction. Just the idea of an initiative, it, it becomes overwhelming. And so you need to provide training and coaching uh, to the, those folks that want to take the risks. And even the people that are resistant to change, you have to stay close to them. And you have to, uh, you have to understand which way are they moving? Are they moving away from you? Are they running away from the mission? Or are they running towards you? And, and my job as a leader is to coach folks uh, that are coming towards me, but also not ignore the folks that are maybe a little bit more resistance to change. Because at the end of the day, if we inside as educators can align ourselves to the belief of authentic learning, it's more than just a belief uh, that our rollout in our development of authentic learning in our building will, will go much better. Prior to uh, our, our journey on authentic learning, uh, we were used to, and as many districts, the drive-by workshops. You know, the we would jump on a bandwagon one year, never follow up, and then we were on to a new bandwagon the next year. So we were really thrilled and it was refreshing to know that our commitment was gonna continue for the next year and the next year. And because of professional development, as teachers, we're on the total spectrum. Some people who are reluctant, all to the risk takers. So the PD provided um, what each teacher needed at that particular level. So coaching and PD is vital for the process of authentic learning. Ultimately, ongoing professional development and coaching has been key to the success that we've experienced. We really couldn't do the work without that ongoing coaching in the design process and creating those connections with community partners, with partners even across the state. So having that level of support for our staff has really been integral to the success that we've experienced. Professional development and coaching is key uh, to doing any of this, uh, implementing new things, especially when we have new buildings, new facilities that, uh, yes, they're brand new, but they look different than what we're used to. Um, just speaking from experience, I, I've seen things try to be implemented without coaching. We just give the resources or we give a new building or we give new approaches without that coaching and that teaching. Um, it, it's kind of set up to fail. So I think it's absolutely key. I think our professional development opportunities have been fantastic and we'll continue to give those um, because if we're going to use these tools, use these facilities and approaches effectively, we have to be coached in them. We have to be taught in them. We have to make sure we're prepared to implement them and, and continue that education so that we can continue continue to, to stay effective. The K-12 leadership team has really been integral to the progress that we have been able to, to experience. That group is comprised of early adopters across the district who are passionate about authentic learning, and they have been able to guide our decision making and always bringing it back to our portrait of a graduate and our directional system, but also taking that passion back to their respective buildings and encouraging their colleagues to take risks and to make mistakes as well. Uh, when we first started the K-12, we were a little competitive. Oh, look what the TES, this is what we're doing in middle school, and we're just like, but it evolved by the next meeting into biggest cheerleaders. You guys are trying that, that's amazing. Can we meet with you? It just began this new dialogue where it turned out to be my favorite committee because we were all supporting one another. And then we were distributing what we learned there out to our particular grade levels. It's one thing to watch videos of where it's happening at other districts and see what other districts are doing. And it's easier for people to say, well, they have different students or they have a different setup or they have different resources. So when you look at our own teachers, our peers and our colleagues making it work 
and making it work very well in our own district, that is a great example for others. So I think that K-12 leadership team is very important for the continuation of this process. I think that if this was kind of one of those one and done types of professional development um, ideas or um, things like that, it would it would have kind of fizzled out. But the K-12 leadership team has really kept this um, authentic learning um, idea going in our district. I think this is the right direction because our students clearly feel more empowered and more connected to their learning. It also directly aligns with our Porch of a Graduate and the experiences that we want our students to leave us remembering and uh, really just focused on um, what their life looks like beyond the classroom and beyond their time with us in Talmadge City Schools and how they can really become leaders, thinkers, and change makers. Authentic lear learning is the future. I mean, learning really is about helping kids explore their interests and also preparing them for the real world. And authentic learning is a great vehicle to do that. And our kids are doing it already by working together, solving problems, uh, and, uh, and as well as learning the curriculum and, and meeting the, the standards that, that we need to meet as a district. Authentic learning was one of those things that I thought I was doing when I first started teaching. I used all those buzzwords and I kept going, yes, I have a student-centered class. And so when I was introduced to authentic learning, the light bulb kind of went off and I realized this is what I've been trying to do all along. I had these baby steps of student-centered activities and ideas for how to give them more choice and voice, but I just hadn't fully jumped into the pool, if you will. So uh, for me, authentic learning was very much embracing all of these ideas that I believed in, but that I hadn't really fully practiced yet. So when I think about authentic learning and why it makes running a building a little bit easier is it allows kids and teachers to have freedom to it's not learning what they want to learn but it's it's taking the emotional side of learning which is so important uh to the overall idea of being a lifelong learner it's not just a combination of facts or figures it's really something that you're passionate about and so when you have that passion uh, it makes folks uh, easier to lead and, and i think about me personally it's in my practice as an educator i just naturally when i think about the influences in the profession you're influenced by those that remember how they made you feel not what they said but how they made you feel and and so for me it's very personal and i want to take that personal experience that i have and i want to give it to other people I, th I think it will benefit our students uh, as they come out the other end and into real life. Uh, one of the things that we're always concerned about is are we educating our children to a level that they can operate in the real world? And these are real world, as I was stating, these are real world ex experiences, how to write a grant. That, that's, that's pretty good for a fourth grader. So. That's, those are authentic skills that we're trying to encompass into our education and uh, teach these kids. We are blessed to have a K-8 campus, so a brand new elementary and middle school building. And the biggest piece of that process and that design process that has impacted authentic learning and made it even more possible is the flexibility of those spaces and having the ability to provide space for collaboration, for presentations, all of those components that are integral to authentic learning, our spaces have allowed for that work to continue and have truly fostered and, and grown that work as a result of the flexibility that we've been able to provide in terms of space. They created a facility, a room for just about everything that you would want to do. We have meeting rooms that the kids can go sit down with, with a guest that's coming in. We've got spaces to spread out and build. We've got a STEM room that has all the tools we need to construct. We've got a computer lab with all the programs on it that we would need to design. So just the flexibility of a facility like this is really, really useful. The flexibility that the new buildings offer are quite powerful. We can pull a wall closed in many classrooms. That'll help us spread the kids out 
uh, we can come over here to the middle school and work in the common areas and the different presentation stairs and kids can make their spaces their own. Um, we can, if, if kids need uh, a quiet place to go, we can usually find those a little bit. So it's been really helpful. The, the classrooms are so much more open than what we're used to in a traditional learning space. And when we're talking about authentic learning, which requires a lot of collaboration, a lot of movement, your traditional classroom settings where you just have your four walls and a door and then you have hallways really is not conducive to that at all. So just your tr the classrooms that we have with the flexible spaces, um, the furniture that we have where we can move into groups and out of groups and we can flex walls and different things to be able to work in larger and smaller groups. Uh, really, with that new facility, really is built for this type of learning. Inevitably, along the way, there are challenges and obstacles that we, we didn't know existed. And I think the biggest piece has been identifying those challenges and those obstacles along the way, whether that be adjusting schedules for certain days, whether that be arranging for collaboration time, and really creating the conditions to make this work possible for our teachers has been the most important piece of this of this process. When the district brought authentic learning, project-based learning, service-based learning um, into the realm through professional development, I really saw my values reflected back at me. Um, and it got me really excited to continue to do more, felt supported. For me, um, getting your hands dirty and asking questions and making and doing the work of real people is what it's all about for me as an educator. Because COVID had a huge impact. When kids were stuck strictly on technology, we know that's not what's always best for kids. So we wanted to expand. We have a brand new campus, lots of spaces. So we have an outdoor swing set. We are planting an orchard, an outdoor science lab. We have so many things. I think the benefits to my students are that they have ownership over the products that they're creating. For example, in my broadcast class that we launched this year, my students started podcasting. And so their ability to take something that they love and work with it and talk to other people about what they're doing and then have that creation out to an outside audience has just been an amazing way for me to teach and to see them grow. This project deals with um our students interviewing community members who are older and they interview them about their life and things that are things that have happened throughout their life and the students interview them over the course of two months and over those two months the kids take notes write stuff down and then they take those stories and they turn it into a biography about that person and then we use another program called shutterfly and edit and clean up and print a book it was really a treat once a, once a month to come over here, especially because there were four, four different students and four very different students that I got to know. I really look forward every week to come over here and explain my life to these kids. I would say our ultimate goal in public education is to kind of create experience that are real world that gives kids an opportunity to practice something that you know, kind of exceeds the walls of our school building. Um, this is one of those activities or projects that allow kids to have an opportunity to publish their own work, to actually have something tangible at the end of a rather long and, and complicated process. Um, one of the other pieces that I like about this program is it connects us to a community uh, or community members in a way that um, wasn't happening prior to this project. So it, it gives us an opportunity to, to work with a variety of different people um, within our community and then kind of give them something as a, as a reward for giving us their time. I think one of the things that I really like about the project is how it brings them out of their comfort zone. Students, instead of just sitting in the classroom, are with adults that are much older than them. Um, they have to be comfortable talking with them and interviewing them and just carrying on a conversation. And so sometimes that's not easy for them and they, they get more comfortable over the different sessions that we meet with them. Yeah, I think it's interesting too. You see kids who are nervous and 
like just scared to talk to an adult and sit down and have these conversations to by the end of this project, they cannot wait to meet with their person and chat and tell them what's going on. And it goes from just a project that's I have to interview someone to how's your day? How's how's school going? Like just casual conversation mm -hmm. from total panic that it was set in at the beginning of the when once you first start. So there are conflicts and things that are going to come up that are an issue. And you just got to kind of go with the flow. Things aren't always perfect. You plan it out, but plans fall apart. And you just have to go with what you can do, and it all works out in the end. In our class, we worked um, for our project with One of a Kind Pets, which is a local um, animal shelter. Um, and the mission was to get the pets that were there adopted before the holidays. Um, so the kids were making pages to kind of advertise the pets uh, so that we could hopefully get them adopted. And it connected, um, in language arts, we were talking about holidays around the world. So we got to really talk about why the holidays are important. And a lot of that tied into family and pets. So that's kind of where that started from. I think it was way more authentic for them, um, especially we got to learn how to use Canva, um, which they were really interested in. Um, so we were able to kind of teach that way and they didn't feel tied to their desks writing these things down. They got to work with a partner, be up around the room and use something that they weren't used to. The project started out as uh, a presentation in a, in a fifth grade classroom and then the fifth graders got very excited about bees in in general and they wanted to learn more about bees so the bee committee came to fruition at that point in time from there uh, they had to do a presentation to the Board of Education and the superintendent to get that going and on site they did that okay so that's all part of the learning process how do you accomplish things and and how does the system work so what's interesting is our bee house project uh didn't even start out as a bee house project we were initially exploring honeysuckle and how it was an invasive species on, on our uh, K8 campus. I was in one of your I teams and I met Kristen Bordage and she talked to us about possibly getting in contact with a beekeeper because as it normally happens with authentic learning, you go down a path and you get stuck and you're not sure where to go. So you ask for advice. Mm -hmm. And she again recommended a beekeeper. So I met with uh, Mr. Passarelli. He came in and did a lesson and one of our students that day just came and said, you know what, I'm 10. I want to do something, but I can't do anything because I'm just 10. And I'm like, but you're 10. What can you do here? Let's figure this out. So she decided she wanted to develop a bee committee and they uh, worked on getting a member members together. They presented to Courtney Davis and she gave them some feedback and then they worked with Mr. Nash um, and then his kids gave some feedback to the to the girls on how they can improve their presentation. They finally presented to the board and they uh, they got permission to to come on campus. So the bees are here. They made it through the winter. So that's really exciting. Um, but their mission is just to improve uh, the bee population in this area. The goal of the Bug Hotel was to really explore the idea that humans um, have an impact on their environment in both positive and negative ways. Our mission through the Bug Hotel was to create an environment for wildlife. After we presented the um, idea to the students and they took it further than we ever could have thought. The secondary mission that came out of that was education. They wanted to teach others about why their bug hotel was there and why it was important. So we were able to integrate math with the measuring and budgeting. We were able to integrate writing. Our students wrote proposal letters and opinion pieces to our administration for permission um, and to help them understand why this was important. They were seeing a lot of habitat destruction around our school community, um, a lot of housing developments being uh, built around our greater community. And we really, they really, really took to heart that that was a home to something before and they wanted to do something about it. Um, the, the collaboration, the problem solving, the empathy, um, was amazing to see for some of those students who maybe kind of sit back 
and and let life happen around them in the classroom, they really um, kind of stood up and and took ownership of what they were doing and they're proud of their projects. Well, it's not your structured pencil paper class. So kids, a lot of times who have difficulty sitting doing those assignments, um, they're up and they're moving. This is an opportunity for them, like their personalities can come out a little bit more, I think, um, or a little more flexible on like traditional classroom etiquette, I guess. And the idea is to create um, transition activities and opportunities for students who are on IEPs, um, who will probably go that career path um, with employability. So giving them like the basic soft skills, the hard skills, different employers, different coworkers, um, and different opportunities to kind of go into the community and see see other jobs and places of employment. I like teaching this class because this is not our core caseload. No. So these are kids that we would never have normally been able to get to work with. And Talmadge City School says, if you're not on a career path or a college prep yet and you don't know what you're going to do, we want to give you employability sales. We, we want you to have that before you leave. So we get to work with those kids that are kind of tweeners on what they want to do when they leave or, and the freedom that we have to set this up. Like Wednesdays, we close on purpose um, and we take the kids in the community. So we meet community employers. We go behind the scenes. We have fun days too, um, working on social skills, like going out to a restaurant. I think if you can put the leisure back into the class, it kids buy in a little more. So they see the end goal. You can have those off the cuff conversations um, we have a little more flexibility in here too. Like if somebody's having a bad day to genuinely sit with them while the rest of the coffee shop runs itself. With the students selecting their own projects, kids often want to select helping other kids. So Ronald McDonald House is in our area right next to Akron Children's Hospital. So that's an outlet where they can help other kids and they get to help the families of kids in a really tough situation. Uh, one of my favorite activities they did with them. Uh, one of my STEM classes was learning about architectural design and Ronald McDonald House was doing a renovation of their facility. So we actually paired them together and they got to actually design a floor of the new building and pitch their ideas to the architects, pitch their ideas to the director, and they got to get feedback on their ideas. And it was a really good experience for the kids. The Applied Exploration class takes everything from authentic learning as well as personalized learning and puts it together into a project-based class where there are three different teachers and we do everything to break the mold. Um, we constantly meet with students, we have them reflect often, and we did three different projects. A Where to Live project that was a practical application for when they uh, graduate from high school or college. We had a deep dive curiosity project where they got to look into a problem somewhere in the world. And then our final project, the kind of crown jewel, if you will, was the see a problem, solve a problem, where they looked at how they can make an impact somewhere locally in the school or community. I liked it quite a bit. Um, I think I would recommend it if you have an idea for what you want to do for your project, if you want to explore some interests you have, uh, just if you want to get to know the teachers a lot better because they are allowed to relax a little bit more than they might in a traditional class where they have this really set curriculum. I actually have talked to one of the teachers that ran the program. And an interesting thing I learned from her is that it genuinely encourages you to get to know the other teachers you're working with on it a lot more than you would think. And, like, they all had the same designated planning period, and they all worked together very closely. And I think that's, like, a unique experience, not just for the students, but for you. Uh, one of my favorite projects we do is game day. So about five years ago, the current basketball coach came to me and said, I have a crazy idea, and I think you're the person to handle it. And he 
presented to me the idea that he wanted to do like ESPN college game day before a basketball game. So I took it to my students and they absolutely ran with it. So they created video packages. We did live on air interviews. Um, we had a feed going out on YouTube um, live and to the community. Over the years, we've gotten more community involvement with it. So we have t-shirts sponsored. We have food there. Um, it's become a big tailgate event. And our, my students every year are working more to improve what they are doing. And uh, for me, their excitement when it's coming up, but then also the community excitement about it, that this has become something that is a tradition now and that my students are the ones that have put it together. Honestly, my vision, my hopes um, for what we can get out of authentic learning, um, thinking about what I, what I had mentioned earlier about kids asking the questions, why, why are we learning this? When am I going to apply it? Uh, I think my, my hope is that we can have, we can answer that question to the kids um, even as early as the elementary level, uh, not just the question, well, you're going to use this in middle school, you're going to use this in high school. Um, really, we want to connect the kids to their passions. Uh, my hope is that we can identify, help kids identify what their passions are, what their strengths and their interests are, so they know why they're using these things and they have the opportunity to apply those not when they get into high school when they just get to choose their classes or college or or outside of uh education where they get to choose what they're doing we want to provide those choices now we want them to uh, my hope is that they can identify you know what those passions are and they can apply them in, in our building when i think about the benefits of authentic learning you know i think it just it goes back to what's our role in today's society uh, our role in today's society is much broader and deeper than what it was you know, 20 years ago, you know, we are responsible for the wellness of our students. And that is, that can be frightening, but I think it is exciting to give, give our kids hope. And when you have hope, uh, the education outcomes follow. So the benefit to our staff has definitely been taking them back to their why and making that shift to becoming facilitators of learning and designers of experiences for students, which I think really resonates with our staff. And they see a, different, a difference in our students and their deeper learning and deeper understanding and deeper connectedness to the content that they're teaching. It's also a benefit to our community because our students are giving back to our community in some way. And our community is involved in the education of our students. They're in our, in our classrooms, they're in our buildings, and our students are out there in the community and making, uh, making an impact on our, our greater community. So it's been amazing to see. Authentic learning really motivates the kids. Um, it gives them a reason to continue working. It gives them something to push them along and really get excited about so that's the real benefit to the teachers. It's the benefit to the students. It's, it's just the want to keep working and the satisfaction that they get from it. The gratifying thing is that you get to see the students apply themselves in different ways. They get to work their skills into it. They get to express themselves in different ways. Um, they don't always, they're not confined by a lesson. They can really step out and do what they want to do with authentic learning. Uh, the benefits to me as a teacher is to work with a student as a whole person to really get to know them. Um, relationships are definitely the number one thing in teaching, in my opinion. And when they have the ability to make their own choices and to do something that they're passionate about, um, they're much more open and willing to share. And um, so the growth for me as a teacher is that I learn right along with them. Um, oftentimes I say to them, like, I'm not really sure how we're gonna do that, but let's figure it out. And we figure it out together. And that's been an awesome improvement over what I used to do. I enjoy this style of teaching because it just allows you to see the kids in just a different setting and really connect with them in a different way that you might not always get to do. And it allows you to work with a lot of small groups and one-on-one -on -one, um, in a way that we're not always used to or that we don't always have the time to do. Kind of takes a lot of the pressure of teaching or standing up in front of the class away and puts it back on the kids um, and allows them to have some ownership over what they're doing. Giving students the opportunity to dig into something they're curious and passionate about just alleviated so many of those classic behavior problems. Uh, we noticed as well when we put students into different learning zones uh, that that allowed them to pick where they would learn best, whether it was in a you know noisier area with other students or in a quiet space off on their own. I think that as an educator, this kind of teaching re reignites that 
love of learning in myself. In many ways, it is hard work, but in many ways, I kind of get to sit back. Um, I truly believe that the one who's doing the most work in the classroom is the one who's doing the most learning. And if we can put that work appropriately onto those students um, where they are asking for permission, they are reaching out to community partners, they are making choices and decisions. I just become a facilitator of uh, making those things available to them rather than making them happen myself. I, I get feedback in several different ways. One way is in journals. They do daily journals. And so for them to tell me that my class or the things that we are doing in my class is the reason that they come to school. Some students don't take my class until their senior year and they say, I wish I would have known about this. I wish I would have had this opportunity earlier and they recognize the benefits that they have received from the environment and from the way that the class is set up. So definitely that feedback encourages me to continue to do what we have been doing. Well, I think that this style of teaching is natural to me because years ago, I was challenged by a professor of mine to make sure that I'm always staying aware of what what is it that I'm doing here and why am I doing it? So for me, um, that challenge has been at the forefront of what I do. And uh, I feel like authentic learning really helps me uh, meet that challenge. When I specifically think about our teachers and why authentic learning is something that they should sh make that shift, it. I want them to enjoy their 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 job. I want them to go back to their why. I want them to go back to the reason why they decided to go to college, sign up for uh, that random education class or whatever it was. I want them to get back to that passion and I want them to experience that every day. And when I think about the community, you know, our community has so many resources that schools shouldn't exist in a vacuum. We should welcome our community into it and be, so they, they can add value to our students' education. When we implement authentic learning, it's an easier way to intertwine the different curriculums. Uh, we, you know, growing up, the age that I am, it was always, you're thinking about math when you're doing math. When you're in language arts, you're doing language arts, science and social studies. They're all kind of in their different blocks. The biggest thing that I see is whether it's the language that we're doing in our social emotional learning or, or our PBIS, um, every, all that language, everything is intertwined. So it's, it's a lot easier to do things that are cross curricular um, because we're consistent with our language. Uh, kids recognize that they can implement things from math in a science or social studies, maybe in a project. And you see those light bulbs come on um, a little bit quicker. Even like I said, I mentioned the social emotional learning, which is so important to us. That stuff is all embedded. So it's, it seems from a teacher's approach, a lot easier to embed those things and to do a lot more cross curricular activities so we're not dealing with those individual blocks where we don't know how one relates to the other. It enables them to be creative and they're having the same fun that the kids are having with the projects. Um, we've, we're already seeing that with the bee. You, you heard about the bee house and all the fun that the staff and the students are having with that. So for me to see the staff engaged um, and having the authentic projects to work on I would think it's a lot more fun than, than you know the book learning that might accompany that. When our presenters um, shared with us the broken heart activity, where we ask our students, what breaks your heart? Boom, we were sold. This was not an add-on. This is something that we can take the ownership of the students and work around and bring our standards in to meet their needs. It was a game changer, and it did not become, oh my gosh, what new things are you going to add to our plate? But it shifted us from best practice to authentic learning by using student choice, which was really important. Authentic learning is messy at times, and we absolutely had to embrace the chaos. Luckily, there were three of us in there together to do that and to have a good time along the way. But it was absolutely, absolutely worth it uh, to see the payoff, especially in the see a problem, solve a problem results. We had students who presented in front of the board and have gotten the ball rolling on green initiatives in the entire district. We had a student who wanted to finish her essay after the class was over because she didn't feel like it was done. Uh, and we had another one who started uh, to help us revamp and revitalize our media center into the location for where the next class was going to take place. I think one of the big apprehensions is that no one likes to lose their sense of control over something. And so for most teachers or, or some teachers, I think that that idea of 
the control being shifted to students with student choice, student empowerment, them really making decisions about what they're creating. Um, that can be a scary process. Um, and it is something though, that when you do release that control and it's not a teacher driven, this is the knowledge I'm giving you, um, the growth in the students and in the classroom is huge. Um, so I think that that's, that's one of the apprehensions, but I would say that it is definitely worth to um, shift that control. This journey has been absolutely joyful to do. Uh, the process has been amazing because when you see students take ownership and your job now has shifted to being a coach and bringing in the standards to meet where their um, enthusiasm and excitement is, it's a game changer. You will see a student who has struggles in school become a role model and a leader taking on that responsibility. It's a game changer in the regards to education. I think this journey is worth it because it gives value to our educational process. It changes it, uh, answers that question of kids saying, when am I going to use this? How am I going to use this? And it gives them opportunities to apply exactly what they're doing on a daily basis. And it's just such a valuable piece in changing education to something that, uh, that we can keep with us for the rest of our lives. It's, it's not about the end. You know, you talk about that North Star thinking, uh, which, what direction are you moving? So the, the goals and the objectives, it, you'll never really achieve them. It's the journey that matters. And I think the journey, when you take advantage of the journey, you become better. And when you become better, our kids become better. The journey has been worth it. I think anytime you see students light up, anytime you see them helping each other, anytime you see that they find joy at school, in the classroom, outside of the classroom. Um, when you have parents coming to you and saying, this is, the, this is a great activity, I heard all about it, they won't stop talking about it, um, I think that's definitely worth it. For me, the journey has absolutely been worth it. And one of our keynote speakers a couple years ago is, do your kids want to come to your class or do they want to leave your class? And I love when I can see that enthusiasm and excitement coming to my class. And I know it's not anything I'm doing other than I'm providing them the opportunity for their own growth and their own development of their ideas. And so that's absolutely worth it. The journey has been worth it so far. The challenges, the obstacles, all of that is worth it. Our students are better because of these experiences. Our staff are better because of these experiences. And our community is better because of these experiences. My hopes for authentic learning is just to keep reaching different groups in the community to bring in new partners and give people a chance to show what these kids can do and you know, always try to help new causes and help different people in different ways. My hopes for the future are the longevity of the program. I want authentic learning to be at the core of all of our classes and for our district because we've seen the benefits, we've seen the results, and we know that this is going to have a bigger impact than test scores or focusing on some new initiative that might come up. You know, my, my first piece of advice is make mistakes and grow from them. Uh, let the kids make mistakes because that's how they're going to grow from them. And um, honestly, I, I would just say just encourage one another. Um, know that it's not perfect and just take risks. And my biggest thing that I take away from this is uh, the piece of advice I could give to administrators or leaders or teachers is the kids are almost always more capable of doing more than we think they are. And this type of approach gives them that, that opportunity. And um, that's, that's my number one, is that the kids are, are capable of doing so much more than sometimes we allow or, or think or give them credit for. There's a, a different, couple different ways that to look at this. And one, I think, keeping in mind that projects don't always have to be large. They can be small. They can be little micro projects all the way to a year long project. So it's really up to them and what fits them. And I think the other thing to keep in mind is you're going to fail. It's going to happen. Um, but even in that process, there's always something of quality to learn. You know, if I had to give anyone any advice about authentic learning, I would tell them to come to Talmadge High School during Thanksgiving because it's the most powerful week that we have. Our, stu our students, 
they we come together as an entire school. We bring the, ro the Rotary Club in, we bring our central office in, we bring our board members in, we have our students in our FCS uh, classes, they make all the desserts. Uh, we have students in our art classes make the, uh, make the centerpieces and we break bread as a school community and offer thanks um, to, in a time where sometimes we don't have a lot to, to be thankful for. And we do that together as a school community, school-wide. So it's a, a school-wide Thanksgiving. So if you want to be a part of that, come to Talmadge High School next Thanksgiving. I think if you're, if you're asking yourself whether or not you want to try this, I think it's okay to start very small. It is okay in your classroom to just find something that you already do, something you already love to do and your students love, and add a little more choice in there, add a little extra step in there. Um, call in a community partner that has to do with whatever concept you're working on. That is gonna make this more authentic um, and it's going to make you feel better as an educator to see the students thrive. Trying authentic learning can be daunting, but uh, embracing that chaos and knowing that it will be messy is all part of it. And I think if you're upfront with the students about it as well, they will understand and they're more willing to go along the ride with you. So um, just trying it and knowing that uh, there's always learning to be done for all of us. My advice to other leaders would be to start with that shared vision and to really just encourage staff to take those small steps toward that shared vision and to give them the permission and the trust to take those risks and to make those mistakes and really to support them along the way is the most important piece of advice that I could give. My hopes for the future are that we continue on this journey and that we support each other through this journey and that we empower our future generations to be leaders, thinkers, and change makers. When I think about the future at Talmadge High School, I can't be more excited because I want to run a school the authentic learning is not just in pockets, but it is more systemic and more operationalized to where we can have half days, full days of student experiences that occur in the authentic lens, not just after a test or not just, hey, you know, it's a Tuesday and we're gonna be off on a Wednesday. You know, I really want it to be uh, bigger, better, deeper, because our kids will be better for it. Yeah, my hope is that our kids are disappointed when we, have, when we have a snow day. And I think that's a realistic expectation. Right now, our kids are disappointed if they have to miss practice, or they have to miss a game, or they have to miss a performance. Uh, why shouldn't they dis be disappointed when they have to miss school? And I want school to be so fun and engaging for kids that a snow day is a disappointment for them. It's been a great journey so far, and I am certain that the best is still yet to come.